Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Skull Session Recruiting Podcast. I'm Mark Givler. We got Kevin Noon here. Signing day capsules. Uh, this one's a little more interesting because the Buckeyes just landed him. Uh, Four star defensive end, Joshua Mickens, Lawrence Central, Indianapolis area, has uh, committed, signed with Ohio State here on signing day. A uh, huge, huge, huge late pickup for Ohio State. Position of need in this class for sure. Uh, you know, they've been trying to get as many defensive ends into this thing as possible. Mickens gives them a, a, a pure kind of speed rusher off the edge, former LSU commit Kevin. Uh, obviously there's, there's a lot going on today, but this is some good news for the Buckeyes. Absolutely. I mean, definitely a position of need. Ohio state had several defensive ends on the board, but not really in the class. I mean, you can sit there and you could look at Jason Moore and say, does he play inside or does he play outside? Now there would be a good debate there, but you know Joshua Mickens is 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 different, six five two thirty five type of player. I mean, you you know what he is. You know he's an end. I mean, obviously, the fact that he was committed to LSU, I mean, says a lot. I mean, Brian Kelly knows the state of Indiana, coming from Notre Dame. <clears throat> this is somebody I assume he and you know certain members of his staff who were kind of carryovers, they were well aware of Mickens. So you have to be excited about this because. You know, Ohio State assembles a class so early in the game, and then we kind of get here to the early signing day, and everybody's like, and then? Well, here's and then. They get Josh Mickens, and that's, you know, that that's that's good news uh, for all. Yeah, uh, borderline top 100 player. Some, some services have him just outside the top 100. Some have him firmly in the top 100. So this is a really big pickup. Look at that burst off the edge there. We got the, the video on now. Great first step, just elite burst and quickness coming off the edge. This is a pure pass rusher. Uh, you know, this is the guy, you know, we talk about this, this Jack position that, that Jim Knowles is bringing to the defense where you're looking for maybe a little more quickness and, and burst off the edge and, and you're standing up a little bit more. And it's not so much the, the prototype, you know, it doesn't have to be a six, five, 275 pound guy to play that position. Mickens is about 220, 225 right now. He's six, three, six, three and a half. Um, but again, just you put him out wide in that stance and you just let him go to work. That's an unbelievable inside move there. We just saw uh, where he, he starts out wide and just just breaks back across the lineman's face and, and gets the sack. So he is a um, I don't want to call him a one trick pony, but he, he is in there to rush the passer. <laughs> that, that's that's what he does. Get after the quarterback, uh, get get upfield and just use that uh, that quickness. And, and, and he's got some length to him as well. So. Um, this is a really big pickup. I think um, just even in a vacuum where we're, you know, we're not worried about any of the other defensive line targets that we're going to be talking about today or anything like that, but just as, as a pure speed rusher, top 100 type of player uh, most, I think have him number one in Indiana for the cycle. I uh, maybe number two in some, some people's minds. So it's, he's one, one or two in Indiana, depending on who you talk to. So again, Ohio State's able to go into the Indianapolis area and, and get one of the top players in the state. Um, you know, is it is this being downplayed maybe because he kind of came on the radar late and and also was I guess kind of expected to do this. I, mean, I know he had he had initially been looking at uh, announcing in San Antonio on January seventh. Um, but you know, kind of at the last minute here, moved things up, said, no, I'm, I'm not only going to sign on signing day, but I'm actually going to, uh, make my decision on, uh, public on signing day versus waiting for the all-star game. So I don't know if people are downplaying this, um, you know, from an excitement standpoint, he's, he's been under talked about or under, you know, there's, hasn't been like this excitement around him that normally you might see for an out of state, you know, top 100 type of player, Kevin. Well, it's, it's just kind of the, the world we live in now because he came on the radar late people assume that he was some sort of plan B. And when you have a guy that is like borderline top 100, depending on which side of the, of that 100 you have him on, that's not a plan B guy. Um, but you know, there was a lot of excitement about some other names out there and it's just like, okay, well now he's on here. What, I mean, what does, what does that mean for everything else? Well, you know, it, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes for people to really keep their expectations, uh, expectations in check. But, uh, and this is, I mean, somebody that I think that as soon as you put in the tape and you watch that first step, you watch his get off, you see his ability to get to the quarterback, the ability to get home, which is something that Ohio State fans have, you know, really had, you know, an issue with. Ohio State has been just this close to getting a bunch of sacks, even though Ohio State is third in the Big Ten with 32 sacks in, in 2022. 
uh, you know, a fact that just goes a little bit underreported. But, you know, Mickens is somebody that I think once people become really familiar with the recruiting class, go through and read, you know, superlatives and all of those types of things that will come out here in the coming days uh, here at Buckeye Huddle, uh, I think people will feel a lot better about this one because, I mean, he's an exciting player. Yeah, I think I think if he had been on the radar more, maybe over the summer um, versus just kind of popping up on the radar here like October, November, I think maybe people have a different take. I mean, Ohio State clearly started recruiting him a few months ago. They They started watching the senior film. It became apparent, you know, he may not want to stick with that LSU commitment, maybe looking uh, at playing closer to home. Um, he had you know, a, a death in the family. We're, I'm not going to use this platform to get into that. Maybe that's something we can talk about with Josh later. But, um, you know, definitely a guy that kind of became available later in the process. And uh, Ohio State was obviously very excited about him. Got him on campus twice in November. Uh, decommitted from LSU. And then from then on, it just it felt like it was going to be Ohio State kind of the whole way. There were some other schools involved, but, you know, just it just looked like this was going to be uh, the move for him. You know, again, they need these types of guys. We've talked about it with others like Damon Wilson. We, we've talked about the need for this pure speed rusher off the edge. And, you know, they've got a lot of the big framed, big bodied guys who are, you know, kind of good at the point of attack and, you know, they're they're getting hurried and everything else, but this is kind of that Dwight Freeney esque, you know, if to use a Indianapolis Colt reference for for Josh since he's from Indianapolis. Um, you know, put a hand in the dirt and go get the quarterback. So, I think this is an underrated pickup. I think people need to be excited about this one. I I just looked and I think on three's got him now in the top sixty uh, in the country. So I mean, he's like a borderline top fifty player for them. So this is a this is a really big pickup. Um. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see how everything sort of fills out here uh, the rest of the day and, and uh, throughout the, uh, the the transfer portal window that we've got here. But, um, I, you know, can, can he play early? That's going to be kind of the question. I, he, he's awfully thin right now, and he's never going to be 270 or 275, but it might take a little bit. I think he's going to have to put on – at least 15 pounds probably to, to get to a weight where it's going to make sense to kind of play him out there on the edge. Um, but you know, this is a guy that, that, you know, again, gets after the quarterback. There's a lot of, uh, there's gonna be a lot of turnover in the defensive end room, uh, between this year and next year. You know, we, we're not shipping all these guys off to the NFL yet, but I mean, there's a very good chance that they've got some three and duns in that room right now. Uh, they're going to lose Zach Harrison. They're going to, you know, so th there's, there's going to be time available. I mean, what do you think maybe his realistic path to the field is? No, I, I think that he's somebody that, you know, putting on my, you know, my, my, my prognosticator hat, um, you know, next, next season is going to be challenging in some ways due to some departures on the team. It's not going to be an easy schedule, but the way that the big 10 is, is that they're still going to be, you're still playing, Rutgers and you're still playing Maryland and you're still playing some of these teams and there's going to be time for him to get out there and play with the threes or the twos or depending on where he's at now also have to remember that Larry Johnson likes to roll lots of players in and out of the lineup uh it, a lot of it's going to be on uh, jo uh on, on Josh to see what you know what how far along he takes it if he's ready to go in year one Let's remember, JT Tuomolowau committed to Ohio State on the 4th of July, didn't, didn't get on campus until August, and he was playing in September. Uh, obviously, you know, JT had the summer to, to lift, and, I mean, he's just a freak. I mean, that's just what he is. Um, so I'm not saying that for, for Josh Mickens that he's going to be able to, you know, pencil him in in game two of the season, but – there's going to be op opportunities out there and you, you do well. And then you, you carve stuff out. I mean, it's, it's one of those situations of where we've, we've seen guys come out. Caden Curry got himself some time here in 2022. I mean, it, not necessarily a lot of time with the ones and he's somebody uh, that's undersized for his position and, and he still managed to get out there. So I, I could see something very similar to Caden Curry, if not even maybe a little bit more. 
yeah, there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be competition in that defensive line rotation, I think, in the spring and in, in, in moving into the summer, fall camp. And so it's going to be interesting to kind of see which of these guys that they're bringing in can kind of carve out a, a rotation role because that is one position where you can get on the field early. You can be a, in the two deep and, and get get some run. You know, they you want to roll these guys. You want to roll eight. Uh, sometimes to the chagrin of the fans who I think want to see certain guys play 90% of the snaps and maybe not so so much of a equal opportunity uh, setup, but um, this is a spot where you can come in and situationally um, get some time. So it'll be interesting. This will be a guy I think it'll be super important in this class because there's been so much made of defensive end recruiting, defensive line recruiting in this class. Um, you know, we're going to be watching these guys for, you know, the guys they're getting today and the guys they, they came up short with, you know, over the last couple of weeks. We're going to be watching all these guys the next three years, and you know, you know the 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 hindsight factor is going to come into play with all of this. And you know, is you know, did, did Ohio State get the best of this, or you know, did they, you know, did better guys get away from them, and kind of did they were they able to replace them with with capable players? And so that's going to be a huge thing, I think, the next two or three years as people kind of agonize over this class. So uh, he'll be an interesting guy to watch. But as I said I really like him. I think again, I think people would be. Um, I think there would have been a lot more excitement around this announcement had he been on the radar, you know, six months ago versus six weeks ago. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, a really talented athletic player um, and and should should be a really good pass rusher for the Buckeyes moving forward. Um, that'll do it, though, for this one. We have uh, – we're we're cranking them out today. We we're gonna see how this all plays out today with with uh, decisions and things like that. But again, uh, BuckeyeHuddle.com for all your signing day analysis, all your uh, recruiting capsules. Uh, YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle for the videos and for our uh, live signing day show. And uh, you can also uh, download these in in podcast form on your podcast platform of choice. But um, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you on the next one.